Hello everyone, and welcome back to Occult Perspectives. Uh, I think it's been a couple weeks since I've put a video up on on here. Um, been staying pretty busy as always. Uh, the last video I did was um, a video on the archetype of Scorpio. Uh, this video is going to be a continuation of the um, of Raphael. The video I did before the last video, so two videos ago, was my first live feed video. And I think maybe only two or three people popped on for the live chat. So since I don't really have a whole lot of subscribers yet, I don't think it's really... It just doesn't seem to be very practical to do the live videos yet um, because I don't get that large of an audience. And it honestly, it took like a whole 24 hours for the video to even... Um, post onto my YouTube channel. Um, so that was kind of weird. I thought that it took so long to process. Um, so it's it's going to be easier for me to just record videos um, the way I've been doing them, and then I will um, I will post them that way. Maybe you know when when I get over like maybe a thousand subscribers or something, and people are a little more interested in doing like a Q and A or something like that. That's something we could do at some point. Um, so getting straight into um, Archangel Raphael, and I just called upon Archangel Raphael a few minutes ago to help me with my chronic pain um, that I've been dealing with for quite a while now. Um, so before I even get into this, um, video, let's go ahead and take a moment to call upon the healing energies of Archangel Raphael for his assistance in healing us at this time. These are kind of turbulent times in the world, so it's, it's good if we can just slow down and really ground ourselves in the moment and move forward with peace and you know, ease. Let it be easy. Not let everything be such a burden or painful. We call upon Archangel Raphael to help heal us. To help heal us of the things that are maybe holding us back, that are, you know, preventing us from being healthy. Archangel Raphael, we call upon you to, to heal us, to heal our loved ones, and to always be with us. Um, help protect us. Of course, we know your energies are working in unison with Almighty Source, the mind of God in the Empyrean Heaven. You are an agency or a regency of that Divine Source. You work under the auspices of the Supreme One Great Awareness, bringing us all healing light. Thank you. Thank you, Source, and thank you, Archangel Raphael, for healing us and for being present with us at this moment during the making of this video. Um, be with us as often as you can. Help heal our, our loved ones, keep our families safe and protected. Thank you. Amen. So mote it be. I just like to do little dedications like that because it, it sends out prayers very powerful. You send out an intention to the universe um, you know, you try to visualize the healing happening as best you can as if it has already taken place. You are already thanking Source for it having, having taken place. Feel that gratitude and feel, feel the healing. And you can start to feel that instantaneously. Uh, most of you on this channel are, you know, into ceremonial magic. And that's part of the reason why I want to cover the lore of Raphael more. Um, because, you know, we always use, we always call upon him in the LBRP. He's one of the four major elemental archangels, so it's good to know a little bit more lore about him. Um, just once more, I'm going to read from uh, Damien Eccles' Angels and Archangels. If you don't have this book, I highly recommend that you get it. Um, the difference between angels and archangels, I've stated this in videos prior, but I figured it would be a good idea to um, review it once more. Angels are almost pure energy, whereas archangels are the powerful, intelligent forces that direct that energy. An archangel also means chief angel or angel in charge. Now, we know that there's, like, um, 
when we like Paradiso and Dante, we know that there's a hierarchy of angels in that final um, sphere of heaven. I don't know if it's the zodiacal or if it's um, Kether, the Empyrean. But anyway, the different hierarchical structure of angels, you know, seraphim are more, I think they're maybe like one of the top angels. And they're right around the throne of God. And archangels actually come like seventh in that ranking or something. But to me, I, um, the way that the reason that the archangels are so powerful is because they are kind of more in the middle. They, they can be more mediators between the physical realm, Malkut, and the Empyrean heaven. Uh, real quick, I do want to make a shout out to um, check out a YouTube channel called Magic and Music. Um, they have great, they have LBRP music, they have Middle Pillar um, ritual music. And that's what I'm playing right now. The last video just ended. Um, they're really beautiful. They have beautiful sounds. They kind of can take you to those other realms. And I highly, I highly recommend using this music for meditation. I'm um, getting back to angels and archangels real quick. So the angels are the pure energy, whereas the archangels are the powerful, intelligent forces that direct that energy. Um, when we talk about the raw planetary energy of Jupiter, for an example, we're talking about angels. That would be the archangel um, Zodkael, who rules that sphere. When we talk about the consciousness or intelligence governing, governing that energy, we're talking about archangels. Oh, I'm sorry. So the raw planetary energy of Jupiter is the angels, not the archangels. But the energy or intelligence that the consciousness or intelligence that governs the energy of that planet would be the archangels. So Archangel uh, Zod Kiel. Angels are everywhere. They're the very substance of which the cosmos is made. Arch archangels are essentially stars, just a couple of steps down from gods. They exist on the level of creation immediately above ours, which makes them relatively easy to contact. As I was saying in that hierarchy of angels, they're kind of more in the middle of the spectrum. They're also incredible, incredibly willing to work with us if asked. I find the archangels to be, you know, pretty forgiving. Um, some people don't really like the energy of the angels. They think they're too strict and they would rather work with demons. But I think that's just a misunderstanding because the angels and demons are different polarities or or different degrees of the same thing. The angels are just the higher degrees and the demons work with the more denser, lower. Um, think of like a light, the light spectrum. You know, you have red is like the lowest, um, the longest wavelength and, oh wow, that music changed on me. That's really cool. I'm just gonna have to turn it down just a little bit. That music will just kind of put me into a trance and then I'll get distracted. Which I already did get distracted. Anyway, I totally lost my track of thought. We were talking about Archangel's, um, oh yeah, the strictness of angelic energy. I don't really find the Archangel's to be, I think sometimes... When you're invoking these energies, they, they will show you things and, and teach you things that might seem hard. But in the end, it's ultimately teaching you a, a lesson that you need to learn. And, um, and then you can move forward and you can grow from there. Okay. And there's one more thing I want to read out of here that I was reading this morning that I thought was really cool about the stars and the angels because an angel and star is basically synonymous. When they talk about an angel in the Bible, it's talking about a star. So if we, you go to chapter three in this book, Angels and Archangels of the Zodiac, one of the things ceremonial magic is well known for is cataloging correspondences, including which archangel presides over each sign of the Zodiac. When dealing with archangels in this particular frame, what we're actually invoking, so this is the 12 uh, zodiacal angels, Malkaidael, um, Asmodel, Ambriel, Muriel, etc., etc., there's 12 of them. 
When dealing with archangels in this particular frame, what we're actually invoking is the energy of certain stars and systems of celestial bodies. Doing so on a regular basis promotes the process known as enlightenment. And it's through invoking these intelligences in a particular ritual I describe in chapter 8, uh, the celestial lotus he's talking about. But there's easier variants of that that I've talked about a little bit before in prior videos, where you can still call upon the four elemental archangels and Metatron and Sandalphon, and then the tree of life archangels, and then, then the zodiacal angels as well. You invoke all of these angels. It's through invoking these intelligences in, our, in a particular ritual I describe in chapter 8 that I first experienced a disintegration of the ego that I still can't put into words, probably because language is inherently dualistic. You'll also find the angels and archangels in this, in this chapter and their associated tarot manifestations in chapter 4. It may sound like something cheesy you'd find on a greeting card, but it's true. We come from the stars. The light of stars comes from the nuclear, the nuclear fusion taking place at their cores, and it's the same fusion that created most of the elements we find in the known universe. Due to our quantum entanglement with these celestial bodies, we're forever connected to them and capable of drawing energy from them. For the longest time, the techniques for harnessing and applying celestial, celestial energy have been passed down from master to student, mostly in an esoteric manner. So I thought that was really cool. And then he goes on to talk about how um, the different animals like Noah's Ark and all that stuff. And when they're talking about the um, animals in the Garden of Eden too with Adam and Eve, it's all um, star stuff. It's talking about the constellations. It's um, all emblematical of that. Had somebody message me. Not sure who that was though. I'm going to have to check that was a Facebook message. So let's get into Raphael. I got sidetracked here. So as we, we said in the, the, uh, the prior video, Sarah was suffering from a curse of the demon Asmodeus um, because she had attempted to, she had married seven men and then um, they all ended up dying. She prayed to God and she prayed for three days straight. Um, you know, this time around. In this version of the story, Tobias is attacked by a monstrous fish. It's slightly different than the last version um, because I was getting this information from two different videos on Raphael. Use the fish's parts to... Oh, you can use the fish parts to heal the sick and the wounded. So not just to banish away the demon. Um, um, so they arrive at Ragiel's house, Ragiel, a kinsman of one of the tribes of Israel and an ally according to Raziel, the father of the cursed Sarah. I wonder if I meant to type Raziel or Raphael there. I don't know why Raziel is in there. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a typo. <laughs> I meant to type Raphael. So let's back up just a little bit. Um, so this is, it, you got to go back and watch the first video for this part to make sense. Um, because I started, um, I'm going to go ahead and put that Raphael video in the... I think it's already in the Archangels playlist, and it's already in the um, Ceremonial Magic playlist. So if you go back and watch that video, at the end of the video, um, Tobias had stumbled across a beautiful man who he asked to serve as his guide. The man introduced himself as Azariah. That's the underworld name of Raphael. And he agrees to help Tobias. Sarah was suffering from the curse of the demon, we, as we said before. When she prayed to God, she prayed for three days straight. Tobias was attacked by a monstrous fish. They arrived at Rachel's house, or Raguel, a kinsman of one of the tribes of Israel and an ally, according to Raphael. Ooh, 
Raguel is the father of the cursed Sarah. Azariah tells him to marry Sarah. Because Sarah was so scared of getting married again, but Azariah goes goes ahead and tells um, Tobias. Sorry, I took such bad notes on this. I thought I would be able to get through this a little bit better, but it's hard to decipher what I typed down. So Tobias is scared of marrying um, Sarah because he thinks that he. So this is an alternative version of the story. This is from the other video. Um, they arrive at Raquel's house. Azariah, or Raphael, tells Tobias to go ahead and marry Sarah. So they, he prays with Sarah three days before consummating their marriage. And on the first day, he should lay the liver of the fish on the fire. This will keep the demon away. And by the third day, he will receive a blessing that will see him impregnate Sarah. On the fourth day, he will give her child out of love and not lust. He receives the blessing of Sarah's father which is actually his relative because they're cousins. So that's really kind of odd. Um, in this version, when Raphael sought out the demon and defeated him and bound, he bound him in the upper desert of Egypt, Sarah and Tobias prayed for three days and slept together on the fourth day. Someone thought, someone thought he was dead and they were preparing his grave, but of course the maidservant found him alive and well. Wow, they were already preparing um, for Tobias's grave because they thought that he was going to die after having sex with Sarah. But he had survived because they burned the fish. Raguel, the, the father, rejoices at the good news. And kind of the funny note that the guy put in this video was, um, he, this is the only father in the world who would be happy that his daughter has finally had the, her virginity taken. So she hadn't actually had sex with anyone yet. She had only gotten married. And then by the time that she tried to have sex with um, her new husband, the demon would come in and kill him, basically, before that would happen. Um, so now that Tobias has finally, they've finally had sex, um, they're married, there's a feast of celebration. Tobias ends up forgetting that he was supposed to be helping his father with a, a loan. He asked Azariah to give the note to Gabulus for him. Azariah agrees that must have been the lender. Tobias does nothing in the story besides bone Sarah. <laughs> That's another thing that the guy said. Yeah, it was Tobias's father is Tobit is the one who's like more righteous. Tobias is just kind of gets lucky and, and meets Raphael, which is able to help him in this instance. Tobias doesn't even send word that he's okay to his father. Raguel offers to send a message, but Tobias says, nah, I'll do it myself. And Raguel is Sarah's father. Raguel sends a gift wrapped box containing his testicles. <laughs> it's kind of weird. That was one of the interpretations, though, that uh, it's either myth and mythology or um, legends of history. There's two YouTube channels that are very similar, and those are the two that I, I get a lot of information from. Legends of history and myth and mythology explained. I think those are the two. It's one of those guys. They're very similar in the, the work that they do. When he returns home, Azariah tells Tobias to kiss his father. So Raphael tells Tobias to kiss his father and place the gall of the fish he killed upon his forehead. His father, Tobit, recovers his eyesight um, from when the bird um, flew over him and crapped in his eyes. Um, Tobit's father, or Tobias's father, Tobit, um, lost his eyesight. He was a super righteous guy, and then just one day a bird just came and crapped in his eyes. 
they glorify God several days of feasts um, and celebrating because his eyesight's been recovered. It's a miracle, you know. The father tells him he didn't do so hot. Um, tells Tobit, you know, you didn't do the best job. And uh, to, tells Tobias. I get Tobias and Tobit mixed up continuously. So Tobias is the son. Tobit tells him he didn't do such a great job and um, that he should give something to Raphael or Azariah, um, you know, for everything he did for him because he is basically the one that helped Tobias with everything. Azariah finally reveals that them that to them that he was the Archangel Raphael because they had no idea up to this point. They just thought he was a really intelligent, good, good looking guy and had been sent by the Lord. But now that they had passed the test of righteousness, um, Raphael came to heal and deliver the demon from Sarah, or from the devil, it says. He says, I am the archangel Raphael, one of the seven who stands before the Lord. Tobias and his father fall to their knees. Raphael says, fear not. It is time for me to return to him who sent me and record this story. Um, so Raphael's going back to heaven, and he says, record this story for me. And that's how the book of the book of Tobit comes about. He disappeared, and they spread the story. Um, so now I'm going to cover a little bit of lore from Raphael in the book of Enoch. And then I'm going to go ahead and end the video. I'm basically just going to read what I have here in the notes. And then go ahead and wrap this video up, because I don't think I have too much time left. If I can actually make it through all of this. So Azazel is one of the uh, watchers, one of the fallen angels in the book of Enoch. And Azazel gave many secrets to mankind, including war. Raphael is given complex orders. He is to bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him in the darkness, etc. And open, opening the desert, uh, which is Duadel, D-U-A-D-E-L, and cast him in there. Uh, basically cast into an abyss to hide his face forever. And then on the last day of judgment, he will still be cast into the fire. That's pretty, pretty strict. So Raphael is charged with taking care of this Azazel. Restore the world uh, which the angels corrupted and announce life to it, that I may revive it. So that's God commanding Raphael. Raphael here and in Tobit. Uh, Raphael here is very, you know, vengeful. And then Tobit, he's friendlier. This is a, the, a fiercer side of him. In both stories, Raphael is responsible for binding a demon. Asmodeus in the book of Tobit and Azazel um, here in the book of Enoch. Um, and he, he is also a healer in both instances. Raphael heals the whole earth in the book of Enoch, which has become corrupted by the Watchers and their spawn. Um, reforms it back to its original state. That's kind of like the whole metaphor of the Garden of Eden. Perhaps Raphael was in the Bible, but was in another form, so we don't know who he was. So he could have been in the Bible, but it may not have mentioned him by name, because he is a shapeshifter, and he is associated with the serpent in the Caduceus wand. The Pool of Bethesda, um, if you're familiar with the Elder Scroll games, or um, just the Bethesda company in general, they do software um, for video games such as the Elder Scrolls 3, I know for sure. I don't know, I think Bethesda did Skyrim too, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that's actually from the Bible, the Pool of Bethesda, where several disabled people lay in wait. They lay in wait for the movement of the water, a sign thought to signify that an angel was descending upon this area and anyone who went into the water would be miraculously healed. So it was a healing pool. This pool has five porches. Raphael is associated with this story of being able to heal people that were in this pool. Give me just a moment.
All right. I'm gonna try to hurry up because I don't know how much time I have left. So yeah, the pool with Bethesda. Um, disabled people could go there and late, lay in wait for the movement of the water. A sign thought to signify that an angel was descending upon this area. So that's pretty interesting. And then anyone who went to the water would be miraculously healed. This pool has five porches. I'm not sure what's meant by that. Raphael is associated with the story of being able to heal people that were in this particular pool. Alongside Gabriel and Michael in Talmud, on the left side of Gabriel, Raphael is ordered to heal Abraham after his recent circumcision. That's interesting. In Islam, Raphael is known as Israfil. Israfil? In Arabic, I might be butchering the name, Israfil. He took the role of an angel who takes, um, he has a trumpet, takes a trumpet to his lips. So he's ready to blow it once Allah says it's time. He's always ready to blow the trumpet, signifying the day of resurrection, and he stands atop a holy rock. Is Israfel, Israfel is mentioned as having four wings and reaching the height of the heavens while being on the base of the earth. So very tall, very giant sized. A master of music, singing praises to God in several different languages. His songs are contagious. They cause the other angels to join in singing too. One of the highest angels who serves as a mediator between God and the other archangels. Um, we're still talking about Raphael, of course. He's a conduit for God's command. Some Sufi beliefs, Islamic mysticism, says Israfil is the being that man should aspire to be most like. He has a strong heart and he's a perfect human being or it's Israfil but it's the um, it's, it's Raphael but it's the Islamic version of Raphael I'm sorry he's the patron of travelers uh, the blind physicians medicine and general healing serves as a matchmaker angel of love enemy of demons patron of travelers and pilgrims depicted beside them with the staff <clears throat> of course this calls to mind Hermes Holds a fish, symbolizing he's always ready to heal someone. Emerald green lights, green of, uh, like the green of trees. Um, I see that with Uriel, though. I always see uh, Archangel Uriel walking like in the forest alongside animals. But his darker side's a little bit different. Each Archangel has like a, a more, a darker pole, I would like to say. We get into that in maybe some other video or something. Just as... Um, what was, what was the name of the, the demon, um, Azariah, that was the demonic name, quote, quote, demonic name of Raphael. So these emerald green lights, um, general feeling of relaxation and calmness, um, helps with stuffed noses, sore throats, or stomach aches, they can be alleviated. Uh, some see him. Um, when they call upon him, especially in the LVRP, you know, you, you should be visualizing um, Raphael in the East. Warm sensations and vibrations on wounded areas as a sign he is trying to heal you. He is reported to have healed people in their dreams, too. Some dreams include helping one to break a bad health habit or make a major health life change. The name means God heals or God's cure. Catholics consecrated October 24th as the... Feast of St. Raphael. So that's interesting. The Catholics have a day um, dedicated to Raphael, the bearer of the Lord's healing. September 29th ceremonies are held honoring the three great archangels, Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael. So I thought that was really interesting. It's important to remember it's not up to the archangels to heal us, but for them to help us along the way. It ultimately has to be us that does the work. He's associated with the heart chakra, of course. Connection to those we really are. Oh, connection to who we really are, our inner self, helping to let go of old emotional wounds um, still held within the heart space. Um, it's the layers on top of this divine love that helps. Um, we, we build layers up over time. That's what the video said. I have notes from so many different videos. It's all kind of jumbled into one. But we take on all this this stuff from everyday, you know, general life stress and 
all these things and we start building up all these layers on top of this divine love, it's always there, which is always there and it keeps us from healing the heart chakra. Um, so Raphael helps you to open up the flow of abundance rather than closing it off, you know. When we start closing ourselves off and we don't have that even flow, we start having real problems start to occur, which affects us even on a physical level then. Uh, divine love heals all. Uh, Rafa, like Raphael, but R-A-F-A -A means doctor or healer. So that's interesting. So this is going to cover the book of Enoch. Um, this is chapters 28 through 32 mention um, Archangel Raphael. So I have just a little bit more to read here, guys, and then I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Um, I did start notes for Archangel Gabriel, so the next Archangel video I do, I don't know what I will cover in the next video for sure, but the next Archangel I will be covering is Gabriel. Um, it took two videos to kind of cover Raphael all the way. I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover on him. I've covered him his lore pretty extensively now and then I'm going to get into Gabriel so that's the next one the Archangel of the West there is a reference that Enoch is exploring the east and he talks about the beautiful wilderness and also approach the east of a mountain range the east keeps getting emphasized in the book of Enoch and of course in ceremonial magic this makes sense because Raphael is the Archangel of the east far to the east mentioned at least a third time he talks about these trees and says the east again, there is a valley of water, fragrant tree um, in this, found in this spot. Its leaves were always green and flourishing because the roots were in the water, and the tree is symbolic to how one will always be nourished in the presence of God. So the water is like really the source, it's, it's the presence of God, keeping, this, keeping the roots fed, and it's green and flourishing. You will be nourished if you if you align yourself vibrationally with God. You know, just start being the best version of yourself, the most benevolent, loving version that you can, and you will be nourished. Another East reference: these trees have nectar, and there are other trees beyond aloe, etc. Many trees they produce the sweetest of odors. After the fragrant odors, looking towards the north over the mountain. Um, of course, that's associated with Archangel um, Yoriel, the north. So it makes sense that there's mountain ranges there. Um, then he went over the summits towards the east again. So he passed over the angel Zodiel. And he's passing over the sea. But it says in the sea in the video. Or in the scriptures, so that's kind of confusing. He was perhaps a guard at the Garden of Eden, this um, this angel Zotiel or Zodiel. It means the blade of God. Or he transformed himself into a flaming blazing sword, and he's a, he's personified or manifested. Zodiel might be an actual flaming sword, they were saying. Um, so if we even look at this from, you know... The north is the place of darkness, typically. And then he went towards the east. So you're starting from the place of darkness and you're going towards the east. So you're going like towards the Garden of Eden. So it would make sense that there would be this angel Zotiel there to guard. It means the blade of God, as we said. Enoch would have to pass him if he was going towards Eden, if he was going to make it towards Eden, which seemed to be the case. And then he finally made it in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Righteousness, and comes into contact with the Tree of Knowledge. I don't know if they remember, if I remember, if they explain how he got past the Angel Zodiel. I think maybe Zodiel just... I don't know. I guess he just saw that Enoch was righteous, perhaps, and that's how he got past but Enoch is finally in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Righteousness, and comes into contact with the Tree of Knowledge. Many large trees of goodly fragrance, very beautiful and glorious, and he sees the Tree of Wisdom. He does not eat from this Tree of Knowledge. Um, and I think the Tree of Knowledge and the Tree of Wisdom is the same thing. I'm pretty sure it's referring to the same thing. Oh, these dang ads. 
when will they ever understand how the world's just so silly sometimes? Um, forget them not. They know not what they do. I will leave it at that. Raphael starts to tell him about the tree of wisdom. Yes, the same tree. They are the same tree, the tree of life. So Raphael is here in the in the Garden of Eden. He's recounting the story of Adam and Eve to Enoch. Enoch keeps pointing out how beautiful the tree is. It was not the tree itself that was tempting, but the serpent, which is absent from this chapter. And that's what ultimately tempted Adam and Eve. It's not that they just came up to the tree and the fruit was hanging there and they're like, oh my gosh, I got to have it. There was the temptation of that serpent in the story. Hard to say if Adam and Eve would have eaten it without his interference. That's an interesting thing to think about. If they would have been accompanied by Archangel Raphael, would things have been different? Uh, the voice of reason, that's the element of air, you know, intellect, may have saved them. He chaperones Enoch through the garden. Um, you know, this, the whole idea is akin to ritual, like especially Masonic ritual. And I think there's even older versions of rituals where they play out theatrically you know being in the garden of eden and stuff there's various mystery schools that have done this i think even the mormons possibly do something like that god may have sent raphael to watch over enoch but it is unsure so raphael may have already been there in the garden of eden and then he you know he helps enoch not become tempted by the fruit this time or he's just already there so but yeah he ends up helping Enoch out, making sure that he doesn't eat from the fruit, of course, because he tells him the story again, even though Enoch was already aware of the story, but he had to remind him because the fruit was just so good looking. So, all right. Um, hopefully this video was not too rambly and I was, wasn't jumping around too much, but um, I just wanted to get all my thoughts out on Archangel Raphael um, compile all this information from the different sources and give it to you guys on this channel, um, Occult Perspectives. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it means a lot um, for um, to those of you who, who watch this channel um, and who have subscribed and um, continue to help send positive energy. And um, please continue to help send me healing energy um, as I try to work through some, some physical things. Um, I just need to stay strong for my family and stuff. Um, I think my son may still be napping. He has not cried yet. Um, so I'm going to go check on him. Um, he's just in the other room out there. So peace and blessings, everyone. Hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, click the notification bell and uh, give the video a like. Take care, everyone. Love you.